Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, you have called us to this place on this morning to hear your word, to hear your word of truth that you impart to us through scripture, to receive your grace and your mercy and your sacrament. And Father, to have our eyes opened to what you would have us see. Lord, I pray that you remove the blindness that is within all of us, blindness to what we want the truth to be. But Lord, I pray that you open our eyes to your truth this morning. And so with that, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you alone, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. If you ever drive through downtown Roanoke on 220, you have doubtlessly seen the incredibly strange-looking building called the Todman Museum. Uh, This building looks like something out of a Tim Burton nightmare, in my opinion. Uh, It's like Picasso designed the Sydney Opera House or something. But when the museum first opened, uh, it was a big spot for people to go to in Roanoke. Uh, There's a big event for people to see the new galleries, the new exhibits. Uh, but there was one temporary art piece that the Taubman Museum had for a short period of time that I was fascinated by every time I went. On the second floor of the Taubman, after you exited the stairwell, uh, most visitors would be greeted by these uh, screws and metal nails hanging from the ceiling uh, by wire. There were hundreds of them. And so at first glance, you look at this and say, you know, what is this doing here? And, and who would think that this mess of metal and wire is, is art in any sense? But then as you walked just a little further down the hallway and you looked back at this piece in its entirety, you could see that all these metal pieces and screws and nails formed the shape and sculpture of a man. So somebody took the painstaking lens from finding the exact perfectly sized screws and nails to measure the exact length of every single wire it would take to form this incredibly beautiful masterpiece. There is a sense where the old saying rings true that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But this doesn't mean, or at least it shouldn't mean, that we decide for ourselves what is beautiful, or that our tastes somehow determine what true objective beauty is. But instead it means that we have, we should and must have the right eyes to be able to see the truth and the beauty of that truth that is set before us. When Jesus returned to his hometown of Nazareth, the people saw in Jesus what they wanted to see. By now, there's no doubt that they had heard the rumors of this young boy Jesus all grown up running around Israel and performing miracles and preaching in the synagogues with authority. But no one can be sure of who Jesus is in his grown-up adult state until they hear what he has to say. As was his custom, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. At this time, it was typical for men to be asked to read from the scrolls of Moses or from the different prophecies of the Old Testament and to then deliver a commentary or a teaching on this particular reading. But with Jesus, the people will hear for the first time the true purpose of this scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When we read this prophecy of Isaiah carefully, we can see how easy it was for the first listeners to misunderstand who they wanted this Messiah to be. The good news that the people of God were waiting for in this era in history was good news that they would be freed from the Roman Empire. He has set me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The people of God were hoping for a ruthless warrior Messiah that would come and vanquish the Roman Empire and conquer Caesar. 
So when Jesus announces the scriptures have been fulfilled in your hearing, the people of Nazareth marveled at the words that Jesus spoke. Could this be our heroic Messiah? Could this young carpenter boy Jesus that we grew to love, could he truly save us from Rome? The people of Nazareth had heard the rumors of Jesus' miracles. So surely he will do an even greater miracle for his own people, his own family, his own neighbors that he grew up around. If Jesus is the Messiah after all, then those in his own hometown must be some kind of special privileged class. But Jesus, in all of this, perceives the intentions in their heart. Truly, I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there will be many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over the land, and Elijah was sent to no one of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. By using these two stories from the Old Testament, Jesus makes the purpose of his messiahship clear. He has not come to free Israel from Rome. He has not come to bring political liberty to his fellow Jews. But instead, he has come to free all people, Roman and Jewish, from sin and death. In the days of Elijah, Jesus says, thousands of Jews were suffering from famine and drought for years. But God only sent Elijah to feed one Gentile woman in Sidon. And in the days of Elisha, thousands of Jews were afflicted with leprosy. But God only cleansed the Gentile commander, Naaman. The people of Nazareth knew these stories well. But the point Jesus makes is this. God's concern is not only for Israel. But the Messiah has come to restore both Jews and Roman Gentiles to God. The liberty he proclaims is not liberty from oppression or from struggles in this world. But he proclaims liberty and freedom from sin and death for all people. But sadly, even though the eyes of the people of Nazareth were fixed upon Jesus, they still could not see him for who he really is. If he isn't the warrior Messiah that they wanted, then he must be a false prophet. And if he isn't going to crush Caesar the way they wanted to, then he must be a blasphemer. Jesus came into the world to die at the hands of his own countrymen. But now is not his time to submit to death. As the people of Nazareth seek to murder Jesus for his claims, he passes through their midst without anyone seeing him. Nazareth demanded a miracle from Jesus, and the great irony is he performed a miracle for Nazareth. But because they could not see him for who he was, they weren't able to perceive the miracle. So church, I believe the question our gospel faces is us this morning is this. What do we see in Jesus Christ? Do we see a nice man who lived a long, long time ago that we can learn wisdom or philosophy from? Do we see some political activist who champions our own social or political causes today? Do we see some kind of magic genie who grants all of our wishes and deepest desires? Or do we see Jesus Christ for who he wants us to truly see him as? Our Lord, our God, and our Savior from sin and death. So today, brothers and sisters, I say with good news that the word of Isaiah has been fulfilled in our hearing. Today, we poor souls have heard the good news that the Son of God himself has come to die and rise to new life for sinners. 
Today, those who are held captive by our own selfish desires have liberty and the sweet forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And today, those who are blinded by their love for the things of this world are called to have their eyes opened to the truth. So church, may God give us the eyes to see the things that he wants us to see. And may he move us in such a way that we can see the true form and masterpiece of salvation crafted for us and delivered to us by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.